I'm hoping that my sound is fine because the wind's picking up and I don't have a mic for this camera so I am out camping right now it is now the second day we moved in to our campsite yesterday of our camping trip the first book that I finished for summer ween was Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge this was narrated by Bicus Adam who also narrated um, Lavender House but this one which one did this fit for this one fit for the prompt set in the fall I thought it was really interesting at first I was a little lost because like the narration style was like that I should already know things of like oh but you would know because you were from here and I'm like oh am I okay <laughs> um, so but as I kept going into as I got more and more into the book I actually found myself really enjoying it um, it wrote, for some reason gave me trick or treat vibes um, and actually at one point I thought it was based off trick or treat only to realize that trick or treat wasn't um, didn't come out until a year after this book did so I don't know it just it makes me want to watch trick or treat but I, I actually really enjoyed it I do want a physical copy now I had no idea what this was on this cover like before I read this book like I had no idea what was going on and now that I've read it I yeah I get it I see it now so yeah um, the next book that I finished for Summerween was Conjuring the Witch by Jessica Leonard narrated by Linda Jones this worked for the read a graphic novel manga novella prompt and this was interesting I was nervous about getting into this just because I don't I tend to avoid anything with any major religious context and even though this was like criticizing um, Christianity and was it I think it's Christianity I'm not entirely sure I don't know what the sects are of Christianity um, but it's questioning the church really and questioning um, the organization of it and the patriarchy of it a lot of things that I've already really known about so it was, even though I thought the book had some interesting things to say it was things that um, I was already pretty aware of I thought how they handled some things was interesting it's a very everything in the book was very visual in my opinion like it would have been a like I think it would make for a great movie just with a lot of the visual a lot of the um, trans not even transition but a lot of the visual elements to it and I thought it would be really cool sorry if I keep glancing around we do have camp neighbors and even though they've been out all day I suspect that they'll be back at any time um, we did see their boat come in so that's what I'm kind of waiting for so those are the two that I finished I'm also still reading this delicious death by Kayla Cottingham I'm still really enjoying it this is my read in the dark prompt book so I, it's been really hard just because I'm trying to read this at the in the dark but for the last couple I've actually started this before Summerine started about a week before but we were prepping I was working but we were prepping for this camping trip and so every time it got dark to the point where I would want to read I'd get like a page or two in and pass out because I was so tired and the same goes for currently as I'm <laughs> as we're camping we're doing all the stuff outside and by the time it's dark we're still doing stuff like we're still fishing um, so I'm not able to get to this as much I may just go ahead and try to read this during the day anyway um, because I've started listening to another audiobook that was not on my original um, summer bean TBR that I think would be good to read as we're fishing at night because I do need to pay attention to the fishing pool as we're fishing for catfish um, and that's hard to do while reading so I figure I can plug in uh, my headphones and listen to this one which is Funeral Girl by Emma K. Holland narrated by Jess Nahikian. Um, Nahikian and this one is essentially about Georgia Richter who can awaken the spirit of the departed and she works for a 
enriched her funeral home. Um, so when she touches a dead body, the spirit of that body awakens and she tries to fulfill the final wishes of that person. So that when, and when that happens, when she touches the body again, that they go beyond, they, they move on, but she doesn't know where that is yet. Um, and so our adventure begins when a classmate's body comes across um, the funeral home and Georgia touches his body and I'm reading it. So I'm really interested in this, so I think obviously I'm reading it. <laughs> but I think, it, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Um, I listened to it very, very briefly and thought it was fun. Yeah, I think it'd be a perfect opportunity to be able to listen to it as I'm fishing. It makes more sense. The main one I had wanted to get to for this week was episode 13 by Craig DeLuey, and I'm still really wanting to get to it. So I would like to finish this one. I'm almost, I think, about halfway through. So, I think I can do it. Okay, I'm in the tent now. It's still the same day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm in the tent now. I'm because I got a little tired and Brad and his dad decided that they wanted to go fishing um, before we go fishing. <laughs> so I have to say, I love the view from our tent. Here, check it out. I love this. But let me put you on the tripod. Well, my original idea was to lay down. Um, you're still not where I would like you to be. Yeah, my original idea was to like lay down and chat with you about this. Uh, however, right, despite enjoying the view, uh, <laughs> at this time, right now, the sun is setting right onto where my head would typically lay. I almost thought about switching to Brad's cot, but he has the same issue. His head is kind of where my head is going. He's just perpendicular to me. So, anyway, I'm hoping that the sound of the wind isn't as bad in here, but if you hear this, like, flexing of the tent my apologies um yeah so it's later in the day we're essentially waiting for sunset at this point which we think is going to be about an hour hour and a half away brad and his dad went to go fishing in a uh less windy spot of the lake because essentially and basically to kill time because we're essentially waiting for sunset so we can go fishing for catfish which are notorious for like being eaters after dark or yeah once 
at sunset, after dark, etc. So, yeah. Today was actually pretty decent. I enjoyed it. It was hot. It's been hotter than we had expected. So, this book, so close to being done. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I, I feel bad because, like, I, it's not like I really talk extensively about Dark Harvest or Conjuring the Witch, but at the same time, they're both novellas, so it would have been hard to really chat about it without giving away spoilers because they're so short in terms of a story. This one, though, is, I feel like isn't that much longer. I feel like it's just, it's un just under 300 pages um, at 288. Zoe is our main character and is trying to figure out her feelings for her best friend who is trans and an influencer. And because of her influence, she was able to get them um, tickets, get Zoe and two others tickets for a music festival that's supposed to be like the up and coming thing that's supposed to, that's like supposed to pair, compare to Coachella. They're all hollows or ghoul, not ghouls. They're all um, hollow people which are a type of like zombie-esque person in here. I enjoy zombie books um, but I particularly enjoy about zombie books, figuring out how it happened, how the outbreak started, and how it's affected society. And this, I almost feel, is too quick in terms of the government agencies not only taking over, but society itself, like, relaxing. Like, it's been two years since the start of that pandemic, and the hollow people are allowed to go wherever, so long as they check in about where they're going and get approval which is nice. I just don't see our government doing that in two years after the whole, after COVID happened and seeing how uncoordinated everybody and all everybody was. So that's, that's, that's my, that's my take on that. I get that Zoe is trying to figure out her feelings for Celeste. However, my thing is, is that I understand Celeste and Zoe's friendship. Um, to a point we're slowly getting everyone's background. What I don't understand is Zoe and Celeste's friendship with Jasmine and Val. Like, I, like we even get Val and Jasmine's history. Like, we kind of, that's another thing I, I'm enjoying about this is that we each, we get each of their perspectives in terms of um, when the Hall Wing took place, and that's really cool. But I still have yet to really figure out how and why. Val and Jasmine are friends with Celeste and Zoe when the two of them were like best friends for years and years before the Halloween even happened. So, and it even said that it was like a brief explanation of like Val and Jasmine wouldn't have given them the time of day, but then the Halloween came and now they're all friends. So I'm going to read more of it and see what's going on because like they're still at this music festival, there's some kind of darker thing going on and they were just freaking out. Um, Jasmine, Celeste, and um, Zoe were just freaking out thinking that, that something really bad just happened to Val. I don't know how to feel about Val so far <laughs> because she keeps putting bad guys over her friends so far. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. So even just reading that chapter, I still don't know how to feel about Val. Like, I, at first I enjoyed her, um, but as we go along, I'm questioning whether or not I should be enjoying her as a character, because ultimately she kind of has this mentality of, there's a cute guy, I'm going with that cute guy, um, my friends are now, um, like, are in the background. Um, and this guy in particular is just a shit, <laughs> just misogynistic and ridiculous. And like, n no one in the group likes him. When she disappears, they freak out because something bad is happening and they think that she may have something to do with it or like is involved with it somehow and then find her canoodling with this guy. She's pissed 
because she finds them overbearing and no longer cares about the investigation that they were looking into um, to a point. And then even when they went to seek out answers from a bartender, I feel like they were asking them wrong questions and getting not helpful answers. This feels very meandering to me, but I'm going to keep reading and see what I think. <laughs> Selfish, I am flawed, but I can love And so I wear this smile fit for the place above You know me, the truth gets heavier every night I promise I'll be the one if you help me win
Okay, so it's been a couple days since I've filmed. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I think it's been a day and a half. Um, but I did finish Good things, how about yourself? Yeah. Sorry, our neighbors are back. Um, and I'm hoping the wind isn't destroying the sound too much. I feel like it might be though. Okay, so I finished This Delicious Stuff by Kayla Cottingham. Um, and it was all right. I feel like there were things that I was hoping would be in here that didn't. Um, ultimately, this is a zombie type book, um, but it's questioning um, who the real monsters are, um, similar to, very much similar to um, 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 Dark Harvest. I don't know. There were some things about it. There were some um, things that I think will age it. Uh, the fact that social media is such a huge thing and that all these social media apps are named Twitter, Instagram, BuzzFeed even. Um, not that that's a social media, but that's a news outlet of sorts. I don't know. I feel like if I was younger, I would have enjoyed this better. Not that I didn't enjoy this. I just would have enjoyed it better. There are always things with zombie type books that I like in terms of finding out like what are the symptoms, what brought this on, um, to what extent um, does this virus happen because it tends to be a virus of some sort. So, and I think, I don't know if I was just spoiled with the Newsflash series that went so in depth with that, that this felt a little lacking to me. There was certain elements that I really did enjoy. The, the diversity in here was fun exploring emotions um, or attraction to your best friend is also interesting and I think this was ultimately made for new adults um, and therefore wasn't exactly targeted to me um, not to say like I said not to say that I didn't enjoy it I just feel like I would have enjoyed it better had I been younger so but ultimately did think it was really fun. There was a couple things I was able to guess. I feel like this could have benefited from being a longer book because it is ultimately under 300 pages. I think ultimately it's feeling like a 3.5, 4 star. Like I will keep it as for my zombie collection of sorts. So yeah. So there's that update. Another update uh, that I wasn't sure how to film but since it's here and it'll probably be a couple a week or so before this vlog comes out um dun, dun, dun. yeah yeah brad proposed Shing. sparkle sparkle yeah it was really sweet i'm not gonna get into too many details but the fact that he proposed on our annual camping trip out on a lake that we both thoroughly enjoy and love and it's just an intimate place for us was just perfect. It was all just perfect. I'm so happy. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> and it felt really weird to hold this up with my left hand because typically I feel like I do this, but I don't, I don't know. I, it's one of those things where... I see other people do this and I'm like, why Why is it that anytime someone, I apologize if you can hear someone burping in the background, someone out on the lake is being very loud. Um, but I never quite understood like, oh, why do you go do like that when someone like gets down on one knee? And I did that because I was trying not to like yell and scream because it was just a flowery assing moment. Uh, yeah, so. But yeah, I'm just, I just wanted to update you. I'm happy. And I finished my second book. Only my second book <laughs> for the Summer Read Readathon. Um, so I will be starting uh, episode 13 now, physically. Um, I haven't gotten further in Funeral Girl at all. So. Place 
a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time. Just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good. Best I've ever felt. Get me up. So and new. So where I can find myself. and gross um it's our last day we're moving out of the campsite brad is with his dad oh my god i am filthy um getting the boat put back i think for the most part we're almost pretty much there i'm filming on my phone right now because my camera's already packed up but i think we're good to go i did start uh, episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. I'm about 30 pages in so far. It's interesting. So far, mixed media. I love it. Um, not much in terms of the story, though, yet. We're just, like, just getting footing, really, um, about who everyone is and what the role is and a bit about their background. So, um, so far I'm enjoying it, though. Did not get nearly as far as I wanted. The same with Funeral Girl. Because ultimately, I'm finding that when I'm out here, I just would prefer not to have technology. So, like, when uh, we were down fishing, I said that I would, like, listen to Funeral Girl there. But, like, I like being able to keep my ears open and listen to just, like, nature sounds. Of, and if I like having conversations with Brad and his dad, um, and I can't really do that with an earbud in. And yeah, so I didn't listen to that at all. I did listen to it a little bit here and there when I had to like drive to the store, which the closest one is about uh, three miles away. So that's what I ended up doing instead. Brad and his dad are back with the boat. So that's my update for now, but I will probably get this into keep this going until tomorrow just so I have a little more to talk about and I have time to be able to think about the books that I've read for Summerween and this um, camping vlog and be able to 
uh, not be as scrambled, brain scrambled, as I am currently. So, good morning. Um, so it's actually Monday morning. I did not film yesterday or Saturday after we left the campsite just because putting stuff away and ultimately just wanting not to do anything at all. So, um, technically I was supposed to work yesterday, but managed to like extend my vacation for one more day, <laughs> um, to give me like a slight reprieve, which thankfully just cause like both yesterday both brad and i were just like oh my god we need a vacation from our vacation to be able to acclimate back into the real world right now so we're both kind of struggling this morning he's already left for work uh, i'm getting ready to i'm taking the dog out because apparently this is my favorite time to like freaking update you but i just wanted to close this vlog out um i did for summer ween managed to read three books um and they were The Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge, which I am giving three stars. If they alter in star ratings than what I originally gave them, it's because I thought about it a little bit more. <laughs> um, so yeah, Norman Partridge's Dark Harvest was three stars. I enjoyed it for the most part, but the beginning was very kind of... Um, lost me for a bit um just because it talked like I should already know what's going on and I think that was just the style of the book uh but ultimately I did enjoy it oh my dog's done you're a good boy okay uh ultimately did enjoy it it gave me trick-or-treat vibes i want to watch trick-or-treat still haven't watched it yet um and that one i got done like right at the beginning of the week so which i was pretty happy about um and then conjure the witch by i forget who um but it'll be here I am giving 2.5 stars. It wasn't bad. Ultimately, it was just kind of meh. It had a lot about religious um, ness that I already like. I already knew it was nothing new to me. But um, yeah, two and a half stars. It was enjoyable. I don't think I'll ever like reread it or get a physical copy. But it was an enjoyable audiobook for the most part for a, a two and a half hour trip which I also finished at the beginning. Um, and then my final book was This Delicious Death by Kayla Cottingham, um, a zombie-esque book following, oh, I, yeah, that I enjoyed uh, probably 3.5 stars. I feel like I would have enjoyed it more had I been young, a bit younger, like if had it come out when I was younger, I think I would have really enjoyed it. I liked the diversity for the most part. Um, but as I wrote a review for this on Instagram, I realized that I liked the diversity, but it felt very shallow in terms of like, we didn't get to know all the diverse characters. Like we kind of did, but we could have got them to know them more. And I feel like this book is ultimately being compared to News Flesh for me personally, not everybody else. Um, because I feel like News Flesh kind of spoiled me in terms of diving into the world building. Um, Mira Grant, AKA Sean McGuire does a great job in terms of, uh, answering questions when it came to the zombie apocalypse and what it affected, who it affected, how it happened. And I just didn't get that with <laughs> this book, with, uh, this delicious death. And I wanted to, I always want to when it comes to zombie books, but I also understand that News Flesh is a huge, relatively huge series, uh, that Mira Gant put a lot into, and this is one single book. So, it's, uh, comparing apples and oranges, really, it feels like, so. But I still enjoyed it, for the most part. Um, I think it would have benefited from being longer. Um, and despite it being pitched as new adult, I also feel like it was very... Uh, had some YA tropes and stereotypes that it could steer clear from. Um, I don't think all softball players are lesbians. 
Um, um, I, I think I'm DNFing Funeral Girl. I forgot who that was by as well. Um, just, and it's, I don't I think it was a mix between the narrator themselves as well as how the author decided to narrate it. It just felt very self-absorbed in terms of, it had an interesting premise in terms of we're following this girl who works in a funeral home. It's a family funeral home. Um, so her family owns it and she can essentially call up the spirits of those she touches who come through the funeral home and she tries to grant them or fulfill their last wish essentially. Um, but when it comes to a boy that's in her grade who ends up dying and passing through, um, like she has to fulfill his last request. We never, so I didn't get to that part. I got 20% of the way through, uh, Milo, who's the boy had just died and our main character made it all about her, about how she felt about it. And I get that she's like questioning death and she's afraid of death and she has this power that she doesn't know what to do with and no one knows about it. But it was just very self-absorbed and I wasn't liking it. So I DNF'd it. I started listening to the love, to listening to something else, which you'll hear about hopefully in my July wrap up. And then I'm also still reading, physically reading, um, episode 13 by Craig DeLui. Uh, it's actually reading pretty fast. I think I'm almost a hundred pages in and I've only picked it up a couple times. Uh, I just wasn't able to complete it while we were out camping. Um, so I'm still hoping to complete that. I knew that, um, a lot of my summer mean TBR was going to spread throughout the rest of the month. So hopefully, uh, you'll hear more about that in the July wrap up as well. Um, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it this far, let's go ahead and put a tent emoji for camping, um, or a ghost emoji for summer rain. And yeah, thank you so much. Like this video, subscribe if you have yet to do so, and I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. I will see you in another video very soon. Choo.